whole new world. Behind this song that, admit it, you definitely sung in front of a mirror as a kid, is a voice with an amazing story. Leia Salonga was just seven years old when she started performing on stages in the Philippines. By the age of 17, she'd been whisked all the way to London's West End and beat out literally hundreds of other singers from all around the world to star in what would become one of the biggest musicals of all time, Miss Saigon. She is the very first Asian woman to ever win a Tony for a Broadway performance. She's a pioneer, she's a musical legend, and in her spare time, yes, she's a goddamn Disney princess. Thanks so much for talking to us, Leia. Thank Lovely you. To you. Lovely to meet you too. So I want to go back to the, I guess, the very beginning because... Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> See how we go. Welcome to my time machine. <laughs> so seven years old is when you started acting. Right, yes? yeah. Right. Do you have memories of the first time you stood up on a stage? I do. I remember getting my foot stepped on by the leading lady of the show. Oh. And, and, and where's she now? That's, and, that's what I want to know. She's still around. <laughs> I believe the children I just never felt fear, even as a little kid, going up on a stage and performing in front of people. There's a great story about how once upon a time when you were very young, you had a backing tape that failed and your brother stepped in yes, to save you. Yes, he did. He was seven years old. I was around <laughs> 10. Um, one of the producers, I think, of the event came up to us and said, we've got an issue. When the microphone is working, the backing track machine does not work. And vice versa. When the backing track works, the microphone's dead. Right. What do we do? And I'm like, Gerard can play the music. And I'm 10. <laughs> <laughs> I am 10. Does his face just go white? It's like, what have you volunteered no, me for? he was there, seven years old, couldn't even reach the pedals. He was so tiny. And people were like, we don't see a head. <laughs> Who's that? That was the first time he ever accompanied me. And now he's conducting the Sydney Symphony. They must have scoured the world for somebody as good as you. How, how do you cope? How old are you? 18. When did you be first become aware that there was a global search for Miss Saigon, that you could be a contender? Um, they had actually had a meeting, like the heads of the union. Who could we send from our membership to th this audition? Mm. And my name came up. I was 17 and I was in uni. I was a pre-med student in uni. <laughs> It's like there's some cognitive dissonance in that one. And my mum, who was managing my career at the time, and very suspicious woman, just naturally, was like, are, are these people for real? They might just come into the country, take advantage of my daughter, and then leave. How do we know that these guys are legit? This is the same guy that produced Cats and Les Miserables and Phantom of the Opera. Had I really been aware of just the magnitude of the productions that had preceded Miss Saigon, then probably I would have been far more enthusiastic when they told me that I was cast in the show, because I was just stoic pretty much the whole time. <laughs> and the Tony Award goes to Leia Salonga, Miss Saigon. When you landed in New York, there was, um, the American stage industry was less than welcoming. Yeah, they were. And yet, in the end, you ended up being the first Asian woman to ever win a Tony. Yeah. How far has Broadway come with diversity of voices, do you think? Um, my, my stance on all of this casting stuff, if race is that uncredited character in a show, like it would be with a show like Porgy and Bess, yeah. for example, or The King and I, where it is very clear that you need to have yeah. Asians yeah. and the British. In a show like that, you have to cast it accurately, racially accurately. But if it's a show like Les Mis, where the race is not spoken of, where it doesn't matter, then you get the best people who can sing it, and that's, that's it. Movie musicals have had a sort of resurgence and fits and spurts in terms of Hollywood in the last couple of years, right. and of course, the film that is most likely to walk away with the Oscar this year is La La, La Land. Land. I'm wondering what do you make of movies that star people in a musical capacity that aren't necessarily musicians by trade. Right. When you listen to it, when you watch it, what goes through your head? Can you hear everything that's not quite right with it? How do you process those sorts of movies? Ooh, um, 
if the perform if the vocal performance is right, I'll just be like you know people in the audience and weeping and everything. But if something's not right, then something else clicks in my head, and, and it's like my whole physical being starts to rebel at the sound that's coming from the screen <laughs> at me. And it's like, no, no, this is not right. This is not right. I, no, I cannot be listening to this. Mm. I cannot be listening to this. This is not right. And I will have moments like that. When was the last time you had the revulsion reaction? I don't, I'd rather not say. <laughs> a whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. But now from way up here, it's crystal clear that now I'm in a whole new world with you. I'm in a For an entire generation and several generations hence, there is one song that you will always be associated with. That's always going to be A Whole New World from Aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> Did you Not a bad song to be associated with for the rest no, of the No, it's life. a great song to be associated it's with. It's fantastic. As a child, I sung it badly many, many times. <laughs> Still do sometimes in the shower, tell no one. Did you have an appreciation for how big a deal that song, that movie would be? Because that was really at the beginning of sort of Disney's rebirth of Yeah, the music. I mean, it started with Little Mermaid and then Beauty and the Beast and then we were the third one. Um, I grew up having listened to Cinderella. So I was very aware of what these songs can do. That they become these familiar things to so many kids and to so many families. And that people who listen to these songs as children then pass it on to their kids. Have you ever had anybody sing it to your face? I normally, Which is not a thing I'm going to do, I promise you. I just... No, what I normally do when, I, when, I, when I'm in concert is call somebody up from the audience to sing it with me, because I still perform it a lot. For this Filipino at heart, let's all be very supportive. So I get to sing it with so many different duet partners in a year. Take video. All with varying degrees of musicality. Mm -hmm. So I will get people who are amazing. I can show you. And I will also get people who cannot sing <laughs> at all. I've had people who, my husband saw this in Vegas. We, I was doing a show in Vegas. One, one, the guy, when I gave him his lyric sheet, was shaking. You could see the sheet of paper just, just quivering. And, and my husband is sitting in the back of the theater. He's going, honey, I could see that paper shake <laughs> from where we were. We were all the way in the back. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. And can you imagine how it would look like from where I was? Yeah. And he started in the wrong octave. And so what do you do as, just, as a singer? Can you move around that vocally to make sometimes it Sometimes I start singing along with them just mm. to kind of bring them Oh, that's clever. Yeah, right. Hum, but just not on mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you start. I show you. And it's, it's, it's fun. It's really fun. No matter how bad, sometimes the worse they are, the more fun it is for the audience. Slayer, thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you.